Oh no, my hi to my and kia ora. Welcome back, my fellow stream classmates, 1989 to 93. Wow, we're at number video number 39. So we just won off the big four zero, which is just amazing. It's going well, fellas. It's going really well. Now, special interview here, coming and beaming in live from Australia. So uh, over ac across the ditch. Now, I'm going to tell you a little bit about this um, uh, old boy or, or fellow classmate. He was a boarder. He came to us from the mighty Wadarapa. His father, um, like many of the other fathers in our youth group, um, worked in the finance and um, insurance industry. I remember that fondly, a fellow, another fellow AMP um, uh, agent. Um, now, he, he probably won't like me saying this, but I'm going to say it anyway, was a phenomenal rugby player. Now, you guys all remember, especially uh, back, back in our era in the late 80s and 90s, first 15 was pretty much everything. You know, if you played first 15, it was a it was a pretty big deal. Still is a big deal now, but when we were there, it was a, a big deal. If you played in your seventh form year in the first 15, that was great. You, you were pretty good. If you played in your sixth form year, that was even better. You were pretty special. However, if you managed to make the first 15 in your fifth form year or even fourth form year, you were a complete anomaly. You, 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 you basically didn't exist. So we had one fellow who was a year ahead of us called Andrew Lear Tawafi, who pretty much just blew everything out of the water and was a phenomenal athlete and, and played first 15 rugby in his fourth form year. Now, we had one guy who played a full season in 1991 in our fifth form year, which was just unheard of, really, uh, uh, at the time. So look, it gives me really great pleasure and really proud of him. I'll never forget it um, when he played at, at Stream. I got to meet his family and, and, and became good mates um, with this guy. Look, it's just time to say hello and reconnect with Glenn Bunny. Kia ora, Glenn. Huge. How are you, mate? Bit of a uh, bit of an intro there, but um, yeah, brings back some fond memories for sure. Mate, it is a bit of an intro and let's be perfectly frank it's an intro that you deserve back then it, it was something pretty special um that you did and mate you should be very proud of that um a lot of us guys were really proud of you your, your fellow classmates and yeah i mean let's be frank there weren't too many fifth formers doing that sort of thing at the time yeah it's um and i appreciate the sentiment mate it's um I remember probably rather than being proud, just absolutely shit of myself when, when I first made that team. It just wasn't expected. Um, I only started playing rugby when I went to stream. So I'd played soccer up until then. Um, and then even in third form, intended to be playing soccer and sort of all the boys are playing, playing rugby. So I jumped on the wing and sort of tried not to get hurt um, too much. But um, yeah, getting named in fifth form, um, just didn't expect it at all. And I just remember being like feeling way out of my depth and, and feeling anxious most of the time. But um, I do recall all the boys getting around me and being pretty supportive, which was which was pretty cool at the time. 100%. And you played with some big guys uh, 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 then, you know, particularly that seventh form year. Great coaches and Father Peter Blake and um, Graham Duffy. You know, there's some pretty hard hitting moors uh, down there on the number one. I remember watching you guys. And, uh, and mate, not only did you play, but you played this, you know, you played well and you played the season, you, you, you excelled. So well done to you, mate. I just wanted to um, really give you that acknowledgement. But mate, it's great to see you. Whereabouts are you coming from exactly in Australia? Where are you? Yeah, mate. So we uh, are in Port Stephens, um, Corlett, Port Stephens. So we're about an hour north of Newcastle um, and about three hours north of Sydney. So up, up on the eastern seaboard there, beautiful spot. Um, nice big bay, lots of beaches. Um, so it's yeah, it's paradise, mate, to be here. Pretty lucky. Yeah, good on you, mate. Now take us back to your time at Stream. Now I think I remember right. You, you didn't complete the full um, five years, um, but take us back to when you first started. You were a boarder. So tell us where you came from, how many years you did end up doing, and where did you go to after Silver Stream? Yeah, it was a bit weird. So um, had every intent of going back for for seven form like you you do your time i guess leading up to there and seven forms the the reward for it and um i actually went to tonga with rich murphy for a working holiday between six and seven form um which mum and dad were happy to, to fund and 
So Big Rich and I cruised, cruised around Tonga for, for those school holidays and I worked in their businesses. So Rich's family had a cracker factory and a, um, a bottle store and a supermarket and a couple other things. Um, so that was a, a hell of an experience, as you can imagine. Um, and then when I came back home, mum and dad wanted me to go and meet um, the principal at Whited Upper College um, to talk about going there for seven form. And um, that's where I ended up going, mate. So I don't, I don't actually, I can't tell you why I never asked. I just kind of did as I was kind of being told, mate. So um, it was a pretty difficult. I've heard, heard a few of the boys either didn't go back for seven form or had a change of of school for that last year and it's pretty tough you know friendships are pretty well formed and stuff by then so um but it was a great experience right so i went from you know stream private catholic boarding school to a co-ed public school and um a, just a totally different experience but was probably better off for it you know before i went to uni absolutely mate so your formative years at stream um of course you were bought do you remember your first um year of boarding and, and who was in your bay up in redwood Mate, I've heard the other boys describe with a fair bit of clarity who was in their bays and stuff, and I, I can't, rec I can't remember at all. I, I remember, I distinctly remember walking in. I didn't know anybody before I went, so I, I didn't know a single person going. Um, was pretty anxious about the whole thing. I think you know, like being shipped off to boarding school, and you know, um, but I, and and remember walking in with mum and dad, and there was a fair bit of activity and a lot of boys running around and and you know, a bit of banter and stuff and. Um, but may like all of us, I don't think it took too long to sort of, you know, strike up conversations and find that you weren't sort of alone and being out of your depth and being thrown in a deep end, so to speak. But um, yeah, it was all a bit of a blur, mate, to be honest, to start with. <laughs> now, I know you played rugby at, um, at Waikol. Um, now, just, I'm not sure if you're aware, but what it up at college rugby has really come a far away and doing quite well. Uh, actually playing in the Wellington competition now um, against the other schools. So kudos to them. Um, did your rugby take you any further? Did you play any senior rugby at all elsewhere? Yeah, anywhere? I did, mate. Um, so, so played Waikol first 15, um, played what up at schoolboys and played the England touring schoolboys team then, which was pretty cool. Um, I went to Lincoln University down South Island, um, played two seasons for the university, um, and then went and played club rugby for high school old boys. Um, and Steve Hansen was actually the coach of that club at the time. Oh, no way. Jeepers. Um, went through Canterbury 19s, Canterbury 21s, um, was there or thereabouts for sort of going next sort of stage into rep stuff and had a couple of bad injuries made and, um, did an ACL, um, rehab that for nine months, came back, broken ankle, first game back, um, and sort of missed the opportunity. So I was still playing. I, I rehabbed all of that, got back, playing club rugby in Christchurch, um, and was getting back into sort of where I was and got shoulder tapped um, by somebody to go overseas and play. So um, decided that that sounded pretty cool, mate. So I went to Italy for a couple of years and played over there in their Serie A competition. Um, Won, it, won their competition with Viadana, the club I was at, beat um, Benetton Treviso in the final, the first year I was over there, which was wow, not too bad. And then mate came back and thought I'd better start up a, a proper career and get a real job, as mum would call it, and lasted a couple of weeks. I had a couple of mates from Wycol who were playing in England, and their club was looking for a centre, mate. So I, I ended up going straight back over and played two seasons at Plymouth and then played two seasons for Exeter Chiefs. And by then the body was pretty knackered, mate. And I came home. Wow. Well, look, that's awesome, mate. Well done to you. Sounds like you actually played quite a bit of rugby. Now, um, was this professional rugby? Were you getting paid to play? Yeah, fully professional. So um, Italy, Italy was interesting. It was all cash. So as a, wow. a stranger, they used to call us foreigners. You couldn't open a bank account. Um, and there was a few boys over there at the time. I went over with a couple of guys I was playing with in Christchurch. Um, but there's also a couple of Wellington guys. Um, Ali Coco was over there, Dominic Fuanati, um, Tristan Mayo, uh, Aaron Persico. So um, there was a fair, fair contingent as well as, you know, Kiwis and South Africans and Aussies all over the place. But, um, mate, we used to get paid in cash in Italy. So a club owner, privately owned, he'd turn up with a, a big bodyguard guy with a briefcase attached to his wrist, handcuffed to his wrist and, You'd line up, you know, one one night a month and get handed this big envelope of cash, and then you had to go and figure out 
you know, where to hide it <laughs> because wow. we couldn't, you know, without a bank account, you could never send it home or anything, mate. So it was a bit of an experience, yeah. All different now, of course. It's all all a little bit more formalised with Italy, but they were just starting to to take it serious back then. Right, right. Sounds quite mafia, so. Oh yeah, the mafia is a real thing, mate. I can I can promise you that. We had a had a few experiences there, but um, yeah, it's not just in the movies, mate. It's they 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 are for real. Yeah, you mentioned the name there, a fellow I know quite well, Aaron Persico. Now, just just a, a, quite an interesting story. Aaron never played any uh, top level rugby uh, at Silverstream. In fact, he was often in the B teams. Um, I coached him in the under fifteen Bs, um, and he, he may have made um, Colts second fifteen the best. Now. He ended up playing a lot of rugby in Italy and playing for Italy for many, many years. He's got a few tests under his belt. Quite a phenomenal story. Yeah, mate. He um, So I spent a couple of years at Viadana with Peanut. So um, there was a, a good contingent of Kiwi boys there. So the way that the passports worked out, you could have, you know, five foreign passports. But a lot of us had European or Italian heritage, um, which meant that you could count as a local. So it was a bit of a... Um, United Nations team really which is maybe why we were so successful because the Italian rugby wasn't great um, but you're right mate Aaron, Aaron had a hell of a career playing for Italy so probably one of the most durable guys I've ever played with just never seemed to to get bad injuries he just kept kept rolling on mate so he did very well for himself. And tell us about education so you went down south did you um, end up doing a degree down there? Yep. So uh, I went to uni. I actually didn't want to go to uni because I didn't know what I wanted to study. I'd, I'd got myself a job on a commercial fishing boat out at Castle Point, actually. Um, but mum and dad weren't too keen on that because they thought if I didn't go to uni straight away, I'd probably never go. Um, so I went down and did business studies the first year. And like a lot of guys, it was a fairly social 12 months. So I didn't pass too many papers um, and then changed degrees when I went back for the second year. So I changed to a resource management planning degree um and and knocked that over in three years following that so um so came out of it with yeah a, a fairly good degree to, to base a career on later on yeah 100 percent. well done mate um now occupation what do you do for a job right now and and apart from professional rugby what have you been doing over the years yeah so I, when i went back home mate um after playing rugby i did play locally and coach so i played and coached at carterton rugby club in the wider upper so um uh didn't want to I was worn out mate and when you do it for a job you lose lose a bit of enthusiasm for the game after a while like you, it's when it's your profession it's it's nice to have a break I wasn't really that keen to pick up a rugby ball for a while but mm. I did um but went and worked for the old man at AMP as you said at the start so kudos to the memory there mate um did that for a couple of years wasn't really my cup of tea um and got a job um with a land development company you know planning surveying company in, in the wider upper and did that for a while so that's doing subdivisions and resource consents for for people and then got into local government so for the last 10 13 15 years plus um, I've been in local government um, in a planning sense and I'm currently at Lake Macquarie City Council which sits between the Central Coast and Newcastle um, as Director of Development and Planning there so we look after all the strategic and statutory planning um, stuff for the city so it's a it's a local government area of about two hundred and fifteen thousand people so it's got a bit of size to it it's got a, quite a flash title too bones oh it's you know it is what it is mate but um cool job i get to to play with you know pretty cool developments and developers and some pretty large scale stuff um you know developing and designing and delivering motorsport parks and and key tourism wow sort of facilities and yeah we've got just such huge development growth over here there's like i say there's some massive investment and in, you know to have a have some involvement and that's you know gets me awesome. up every morning so yeah wonderful now um is your family still in the water upper yep so mum and dad are still in Macedon. um older brother is in wellington so chris went through silver stream so he finished the year that i started um, or we started so he works for uh, government, central government in New Zealand. He's in the, um, one of the main ministries there. Uh, sisters in Lower Hutt um, and brother, little brothers in Macedon. So, um, and, and Steph, my wife's family, um, are all over in, in the wider upper as well, mate. Oh, wow. Hey, what, what's your sister's name and where was she educated? So sister's Emma. Yeah. Um, so she um, was married to Neil Foote for a little while. So she's Emma Foote. Um, she's gone back to Emma Bunny now, um, but she she had a career in the police, so she became a, a senior detective 
um, based in Lower Hutt for a while. Um, and my brother's in the police as well. My little brother's still in the police. Emma's, Emma's out of the police now. She works for uh, corrections. So I think she does their prosecutions now. Yes. yes. Um, but had a, had a fair old stint in the police there around the hut, mate. Yeah, absolutely. I know the name. Um, hey, just going off the, the question list, do you remember a party we had at your place? I don't know what the occasion was, um, but I remember it and a whole bunch of us are there. Do you remember it? Yeah, mate. So I think it was when I went back to Waikol and, yep. and wanted to catch up with the boys. So um, there was a bit of oil and water there with the stream guys coming over for the night and and the local guys from Waikol. Not no drama, but um, yeah, just wanted to sort of bring bring I guess my two worlds together, you know, in terms of schoolmates for for a night there. But I remember that, mate. Sure do. Now, family, introduce your whānau to us. Are you married, and do you have children? Yep. So beautiful wife, Steph. So um, I met her when I went back to New Zealand after being in Europe for a while. Um, so I tell her that I scoured Italy for the perfect woman and had to go back to New Zealand to find oh, her. Sensational. I don't know if she believes me. But <laughs> um, she, was, she was actually, um, yeah, I met her through her dad. So I was coaching with her dad at Carter Rugby Club, Steve, and Steve and I were, were sort of coaching together and, and that's how I met Steph. Um, so we got married in 2008. Uh, New Zealand and we've got two kids Jonty who's 13 next month and Marley a daughter uh, who's nine. Oh wow cool names. Yeah I don't know I don't think I'd much say in the mate but they suit them they um, you know they're, they're, they're definitely um, good kids and yep we're, we're a pretty tight little unit here mate. They sent through a photo um, which which just brought back amazing memories of our PE trip that we did down south. I mean, um, and I just got off the line from Mike O'Leary, who reminded me that he was on that trip with us. Um, yeah. Now, look, this is a question for you, mate, and you've got heaps of memories, but is there anything that we haven't spoken about or something that, that, that stuck with you all this time that you, you know, want to recap or share with the rest of the boys? Um, I think in terms of fond memories, just the, the cool thing about being a border extreme was there's always somebody around to do something with, right? So there was always enough guys to have a game of touch or go over the road. And, you know, I can't remember, was it two bucks for a, or a dollar for a scoop of chips and potato fritters and a <laughs> can of Coke or something, you know, like um, in, a, in a game of spacey. So I remember the, you know, those things, but um, mate, going to Pizza Hut with the old fairy down jackets on an all you can eat night and stuffing fairy down jackets with pizza. Um, and taking them back to the dorm, um, that'll stay with me. Um, some of the antics of Chris Fooey, um, <laughs> you know, jumping that bike off the top of the bank and just about bloody killing himself. Um, some of the stuff that he did. But yeah, that, that PE trip, mate, was a cracker. I mean, we were looking back at that at our age to do that. I mean, there were some fun things going on anyway. But, um, you know, just that, that was, I look back, you know, that and, and think we were pretty lucky. We maybe didn't realise it at the time, but um, yeah, pretty cool. Uh, well done, mate. I think you're dead right. I, I think we were very lucky. I know I was very lucky and just seeing some of those um, photos and some of the boys are starting to pull up some photos now. And we certainly went through some fashion trends too. Ferry down, that's a, that's a good one. Um, now, do you keep in touch with anyone at all from our year? No, I just haven't, mate. I, I, I bounced around so much, you know, um, going down to uni and then, you know, heading overseas and stuff that I, I didn't sort of keep in touch with anybody or, or even have, um, I guess, a, a, a central group of mates that, you know, I still stay in touch with guys on on Facebook from England and Italy and stuff. But, you know, when you move around like that, you, you sort of start and stop again a fair bit. But um, this has been a fantastic seeing, you know, where everybody's at and names that you forget over time and, and, and ones that obviously you were a bit closer to or, or seen or bumped into recently. But, um, it's this has been a great initiative of yours, mate, to to pull everybody back together and and reflect and um, touch base again. It's kudos to you, brother. Cheers, bro. Hey, look, this is um, and it's no fault of anyone's. You know, we're we're in our mid forties now. A lot of guys, like I've said this many times, we're always a transitional group anyway. Everyone's just gone and lived their own lives. You know, um, I mean, there's some guys in Wellington I went to school. I, I haven't seen um, at the same time. I haven't seen you. So it's just how it is. Um, you know, there's no, no fault of anyone's. But if anything, um, you know, you were part of us. We were part of you. I reckon we had an awesome group 
you know, of, of friends that I'll never forget. So, you know, you, you never know. We, we may have the opportunity to catch up. And I know it'll be like yesterday if we saw each other. So, you know, that's, that's something pretty unique, mate. But, um, yeah, so, you know, I just wanted to say um, thanks, mate, for joining us and, and telling us a little bit about your life. It has been a long time. The guys are really going to enjoy this. They're going to be watching this soon. Have you got a message for them? Oh, look, anybody who wants to come over, mate, and, and have a holiday at beautiful Port Stephens, doors always open. So, um, you know, some of the best fisheries around here and stuff as well for, for different species throughout the year. And like I say, it's just, it's a beautiful spot. So very understated, but with COVID and people not being able to get around as much either up north into usual holiday spots here or overseas to Bali and that, um, people are finding this place. Um, so it's getting a bit busier. But anybody who wants to come and say good day or needs somewhere to sleep for a night or whatever, mate, doors always open. Yeah, what a wonderful invitation. Now, your mate uh, Muffy's over there. Have you caught up with him at all? Uh, not in person, but we we have shared messages. So, um, you know, in terms of life experience, you can you can only imagine what going to Tong is like as a 16-year-old or whatever we were. And um, I came back with a fairly ugly tattoo from, from that trip that the Muffy <laughs> boys put on my leg. So um, I always said I'd get rid of it, but um, it's such a good conversation starter that it's still there. So... Um, it uh, but Big Richard, it was good seeing his good seeing his interview too, mate. He, he hasn't changed a bit. Yeah, exactly. And you've got Neasy over there as well. And, um, you know, um, I just got off the line from Greg Watts and uh, Day Boy. He's in New South Wales. So there's actually quite a few boys in New South Wales. And you never know, once this COVID stuff goes away, you guys might be able to catch up and um, reminisce over a cold one over there in a nice bar in New South Wales somewhere. Yeah, sounds good, mate. And um, we, we pop back home couple of times a year pretty hard to do it at the moment obviously but um we're always coming back and forth too so that the kids stay in contact with the family and, and cousins and stuff over there so um, we're never too far away mate brilliant well there you go guys um look the one and only glenn bunny from a year fond memories um not only a great rugby player but just a great guy and very much part of our year group um at silver street glenn thank you mate thank you brother for your time great to see you man huge appreciate it mate well done and um yeah all the best to the boys Thanks, brother.